Hello, and welcome to another Path bonus episode. My name is Chase, and I'm typically the GM. Today we take a look back with Mordecai, the shifter druid barbarian, as he recounts our story so far in A Letter Home. This is a great place to jump in if this is your first episode. It covers all the major plot beats, so you can jump in the middle if that's your style. It's going to come between episodes 18 and 19 in the chronology, so if you want to catch on up, this is a great place to do it. Uh, if you're listening day and date of this coming out, don't worry. There is a normal full-length episode there for you as well. But sit back, relax, and let Griffin slash Mordecai take you down another path. Dear Mom, Hello, it's Mordecai. We're in Plains Watch at the time of me writing this. As we keep moving forward and things get more dangerous, I decided I should start writing down my account of everything. I'm sure you'd prefer to have a detailed record of this whole ordeal for the King rather than me trying to run everything back to you from memory. So, here we go. Here's my take on everything that's happened so far. I wasn't sure where I was going to land when I left the military and asked you to pursue druid training. And looking back, I'm not even sure why I decided to try and follow in your footsteps in the first place. Maybe I realized I would never be as good of a soldier as Dad, but I'll probably never be as good of a druid as you either. Regardless, it sent me down this road, and it's probably saved my life a few times already. It was a simple job escorting the merchant caravan from Bulwark to Despera, but after a few days, I needed more work. A chance job offer from Mr. Ender is how I met Jackson and Zephyr. We investigated the manner of a necromancer, Robbie Graves, and helped Mr. Ender's brother get out of a sticky situation, foiling a bank heist in the process. We even took a job from the Mages Guild in Despera, surveying the nearby forest. It was weird being back in the woods. After all the time Dad and I spent there doing work, it kind of felt like home. In the forest we found something strange, a symbol I had never seen before. A straight line with a V-shape flaring up from both ends, with a blot of ink about two-thirds of the way down. We didn't think much of it at the time. I only mention it now because it's going to come up later. When we got back to Despera, the Magus was panicked and anxious. We pressed her, and she told us someone was threatening the warlock patron of Despera, the Wanderer. I didn't know much about the patrons, outside of what you told us as kids. Each of the major cities has a patron. These patrons are the one that warlocks, like Zephyr, pledge themselves to and wield their magics. There are six patrons. Those of the Fae, the Forebearer, and Gaia, the Great Old Ones, the Deep and the Sleeping Seer, and the Fiends, the General, and the Wanderer. The Magus hired us on as security during Despera's Festival of Wax, during which they believed whoever was the threat would make their attack. We watched, and we waited, and eventually they struck. They created chaos to lure out the Wanderer, who at this point was in the form of an elven man named Cameron. He beckoned us to follow, imploring us to stay on the path. Where we followed him was to where, I believe you, Mom, called the Nexus. A seemingly endless number of crisscrossing roads leading to equally endless somewheres. We fought back the invaders who followed us in, but one of their weapons detonated after the fight. A small black orb that ripped some sort of vortex in space and pulled everything into it. A clear threat to the Wanderer. You suggested to the Wanderer to invoke the Rite of Consolidation, where all the patrons would be brought to Bulwark, sacrificing their freedom for protection. He suggested the Rite of Aegis, where instead of being bound to a city, they would be bound to a soul. Jackson, Zephyr, and I talked it over, and we agreed to invoke the Rite of Aegis. Zephyr, as a warlock of the deep, was already spoken for. Jackson wished to take on the Fey, as Gaia was of his home city of Plainswatch. So I agreed to take on the Fiends, and took on the Wanderer then and there. From there, our goals were clear. Make the rounds to the other cities, perform the ritual to activate the rite, and take the patrons upon ourselves. For what it's worth, Mom, I'm really glad you trusted us with this. Our next stop was Larada to pick up the deep. We traveled with a group of performers, the final flight. They served as our cover, and we helped them out a little too. Zephyr even caught the acting bug along the way. <laughs> our time in Lorada was brief and surprisingly stress-free after our battle in the Nexus. We acquired the Deep and moved on to Norwalk for the last great old one. We linked back up with you, Mom, and a professor of the Magic Academy in Norwalk, a woman named Addie. 
She was nice. Jackson especially thought so. Things quickly turned sour, though, when we found the headmaster of the school had been murdered. The assailant still in the room. A Goliath. Several Goliaths, actually. As we fought and killed them, they changed. They were changelings. One of them escaped us, but we found the armor he ditched. It bore the same weird symbol that we found in the forest. We decided to try and wrap things up quickly in Norwalk from there. We pushed the graduation of the Warlocks ahead, because once the Sleeping Seer was taken on by Zephyr, new Warlocks wouldn't be able to make their pacts. After a boring ceremony, we went ahead with the ritual. The others had been pretty straightforward. This one... This one was out there. The Seer, or Carrie as they like to be called, showed us visions. All of us. I still remember mine clearly. I was walking through a great forest, ruins scattered about. Then I was in a stone building covered in scorch marks. I saw the symbol again. The scene shifts, and I'm surrounded by you guys, family, other shifters. But Jackson and Zephyr were there too, pleading for... I don't know. A final shift, and I'm in the Grand Palace at Bulwark. A man is shackled in chains that appear to be far too big for him, and a thought crosses my mind. I'm going to fix this. Damn the consequences. I'm still unsure as to a lot of it, but the scorch marks in the symbol point me toward the forest back near Despera, our next stop as I'm writing this. Jackson's vision involved Planeswatch being attacked by plants, a giant tree in the city center. We hurried the final flight onto a ship and made sail for Planeswatch, arriving to see that Jackson's vision was true. We needed to get to Gaia, but nothing said we couldn't also save the city in the progress. Turns out those goals were one and the same. We fought through vines, darklings, a racist cult, and a fairy dragon, who we didn't actually kill. We made friends with him, and named him Gary. Gary's cool. Jackson found a painting commemorating his war hero ancestor and reclaimed the scythe that he used. We also encountered another Goliath, dead, with the weird symbol. The more we traveled and the more clues we picked up, we unraveled the bad guy's plan. They corrupted the same ritual we would use to open a portal to Gaia's realm. In doing so, Feywild spread into Planeswatch and made Gaia vulnerable. We got to her in time, but not before creatures of her realm wreaked havoc on the city, including a rogue Medusa who turned dozens upon dozens of people to stone, including Jackson's cousin. Gaia made Jackson a deal. Gaia could fix the damage and unpetrify the people, but she needed some juice from Jackson to do so. She said she would have to take from him and replace what she took with Fay. Jackson ran the risk of changing, coming out of this ordeal different. But he went for it anyway. Family is important like that. When Jackson came out of the restoration, he was slimmer, taller, and had freaking pointed ears. Jackson Silver the Human became Jackson Silver the Elf. But he healed the city and took on Gaia safely. We're taking some downtime in Planeswatch right now. It's been a long road so far, and yes, you warned me it would be. I'm not complaining. I'm proud to be doing something so important. We've only got two more patrons to go. Then, well, I guess you'll let us know the next step when we get there, huh? If the bad guys at Planes Watch are any indication, we're getting closer to crossing paths with them directly. I know we'll be fine, though. Jackson is one of the finest fighters I've ever met, and Zephyr is among the most cunning. And I'm no slouch, either. Together we make a hell of a team. I'm gonna make you proud, Mom. I promise. Mordecai.